you know, they weren't playing anything on the radio. Oh. It was like, oh, no, we can't play hip-hop. Yep. Anymore. I was like, I love this music. Yes, you know? yeah, and, yeah, that and feeling. So, yeah, and so I really could relate to both, you know, the lyrically, the lyrical content of, like, hip-hop and uh, punk and hardcore at that time. Yes. So, you know, being thrown into Fat Farm, it was just like meeting all these people that I, I never imagined I would meet. <laughs> Or even see, and especially Fat Farm, because there's such a mixture of people coming in. Because Russell was, you know, meeting with so many different people. But now thinking back, I'm like, oh my god, that was insane. But it would be like, you know, one day it'd be like Mariah Carey come in. He's like, Russell would call on the phone, and I would get so nervous because oh I, could, I could, it was hard to understand him because he has a lift. Yeah, 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 and he would be yelling on the phone like, "This one still there, she's still there, she was super dancing there." And I was like, "Oh, um, <laughs> okay, Russell." And I'd be like to the manager, "Like, what did he say? Like, let me put this on speakerphone because I can't." And he'd be like, "You know, bring this stuff, you know, up to my place. I need you to take this to, you know, this cafe. Bring some clothes to this girl or to here." No way. And I was like, "Yo, I'm running the store now. I can't just like jump yeah. out." And, like, <laughs> but a lot of times he'd be like, "Yo, Naomi Campbell's at this cafe. I want you to." bring like this this and this you know for her and the supermodels you know because at that time it was like supermodels oh like, yeah they were the, the thing the thing you know naomi like naomi campbell, campbell um god what were the uh christy turlington yeah um, uh, cindy crawford yep um the original ogs yeah you know, like the, the victoria Hira banks Group. yeah Hira banks and yeah. so banks all big one. Yeah. big one and so he really Jeez. wanted to promote you know fat farm was a lot of uh, all the videos that all the hip hop artists were doing, um, they all would always go to Fat Farm to get clothing, and Russell would give them free shit just because it was amazing promotional yeah. stuff. So I could see how this connection was kind of going on with with Russell wanting to get into fashion, then wanting to get into film. And seeing how it was kind of growing, because there were certain people that were coming in, there would be like Penny Marshall would come in, you know, like from Laverne and Shirley. And I was like, why is she even here? You know, oh like, my God, how does she know about Fat Farm? But she's a director. Then he started opening up like this whole idea of like rush management, doing things for like films, producing films. Yeah. And he started getting into wanting to produce stuff. So he became friends, you know, there'd be like Brett Ratner would come in Jeez. and it was just like, oh, great. And uh, <laughs> cause he was always like, for me, like back then I was like, this dude is a fucking shady <laughs> motherfucker. And I was like, uh, and just a horrible vibe, yeah. you know, I was just yeah. like, he was just so young and it was crazy, you know? So all these like really, you know, he was directing hip hop videos then. So fat farm, getting clothes, everything. And then he became massive did you respect it back then did you understand the magnitude uh, of what you were doing yeah i mean I, I i definitely respected it i mean russ i mean he was actually a, a fantastic boss as far as like giving you know he had friends that would come and work there that were like in prison they just got out and he was like yo this is my boy from the hood i love that you know and he was like i'm hooking him up with this job and um i mean it would a lot of times i don't think that was the best idea because yeah. it was just like oh my god you know like it's yeah <laughs> yeah no 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 and i get that i get that right but he it, it was at time i was just like i really appreciate that you know like yeah. he had a i remember he had this driver just like so smoked out and i was like that just, <laughs> i was like i was he able to even drive you anywhere everything's you know? in it, slow motion bro. Like total slow motion and yeah <laughs> but anyway it was such an adventure working there you know i i I, I ended up like after a certain amount of time i was like i'm really bored of assistant manager position um can I work in the office, like at Rush Management office? Um, and they were like, yeah, you can work in the, we have a position for like stock and sending out like mail order stuff. And I was like, I prefer to do that. Wow. You know, than dealing with the chaos of, you know, customers coming in and, you know, dealing with employees, you know, like, did you punch in? No, you know, like, yeah. can you be folding this? Like, get out of the doorway, stop talking, you know, yeah, you like, got, you gotta be the, yeah. yeah. And I was like, I didn't want to be that guy. And so in the office, it was just like, I had my own world, just like super easy. And I could see behind the scenes, like what was going on. And, um, it was great. You know, I, they, they started getting scripts in, um, for certain movies. I remember that, uh, Russell wanted to do the first 
black horror movie. Okay. Because there weren't any at the time. Yeah. And so the new, I think it was like Tales from the Hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember like looking, I was like, this looks so corny. <laughs> and it, but it made sense because yeah. it hadn't been done. Yes. A lot of black people love to go to the movies. A majority of people, like he did the percentage. I, 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 mean, I think he was like, yo, how come there aren't any black horror movies? You know? I, was like, I was like, it totally makes oh sense. Oh, my God.